The exquisite harmonies of the fifth dimension on 1967's Up, Up, and Away. From 1966 to 1975, these purveyors of champagne soul racked up an impressive 29 hit singles on the Billboard Hot 100. Founding members Billy Davis Jr. and Marilyn McCoo left for a solo career as a duo and have been going strong ever since. In fact, they'll be performing on June 9th at 8 p.m. at the Theater at Westbury in Westbury, New York, and June 11th at the Tropicana Casino and Resort in Atlantic City. So without further ado, let's welcome them both to the show. Well, thank you, thank both. you both. Now, this new series of concerts is called Up, Up, and Away, correct? Yes, yes. it is. Uh-huh. So we know at least one song you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we know that, right. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us a little bit about this uh, particular show you're doing. Well, you know, it's it's a kind of a it's a story about our lives and our and our relationship and um, the period that our music was at its um, was at its peak. Well, you know, I have a feeling that peak never ended because I keep hearing Fifth Dimension songs everywhere I go. Now, Up, Up, and Away was written by Jimmy Webb. Can you tell us about the the first time you heard that song? Oh, boy. Jimmy played that song for us, and we heard it, and we said, well, we like the song. It's it's a pretty song. It would never be a hit. (laughs) (laughs) Jimmy Jimmy looked at us like we were crazy, probably. He said, well, well, no, man, it's too pretty to be a hit. We can't, you know. We got to go with something else. But it sure makes you feel good, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's a feel-good song. Absolutely. It was probably just what everybody needed at that time. Exactly. Yeah. 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 With all yeah. the war protests and everything going on at the time, Up, Up, and Away was a total departure. Now, Marilyn, I don't know if this is correct or not, but was it you and uh, Lamont who started the group? Well, actually, you know, no, it was Billy and Lamont who actually yeah. started oh, the group. Oh, right. okay. It was I. <laughs> <laughs> now you were called the Versatiles, right? At first, just as a hobby, yeah. we we had no plans to to become the Fifth Dimension. <laughs> it was just fun, you know. Yeah, we, we we had no plans to become a group, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were, Bill, you know, uh, we were looking for solo careers, Billy and I, mm-hmm. and um, Billy had just come out to Los Angeles from St. Louis. And Lamont said, well, you know, we used to have a singing group that Lamont and I were in, and we had sung a lot of jazz harmonies and things, and he said, we had a lot of fun. Do you think you might enjoy that just for, you know, just to, for something to do? Huh. And so I agreed, and, and, it, and it, was, it was fun, but I, I think Lamont had something else in the back of his mind, <laughs> you know. And uh, so, so but, but I think both myself and Marilyn was, was looking for solo careers. Exactly. And uh, so, so we started singing as, in, and harmonizing and really enjoying it because we enjoy group singing. And before we knew it, we were buying some costumes and, and, <laughs> and singing in clubs and stuff. I said, wait a minute, you know. <laughs> then Lamont uh, uh, again suggested that, why don't we go down to Motown? We had already auditioned for Motown. We were, we were in the line waiting for him. Right. <laughs> and he said, let's, 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 let's have the group go down and see if they'll record us. And so, sure enough, they did. And and then that one thing led to another. We looked up, and we were the fifth dimension. We were the fifth dimension. <laughs> and the interesting thing is that we never ended up on the Motown label. Yeah, it was Johnny Rivers starting a new label for that's you. That's right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Right, right, right. Boy, that name came along at just the right time because everybody was looking for a kind of psychedelic type of name and even though uh, no one would ever confuse the fifth dimension with acid rock or anything like that it it uh-huh. uh, it was certainly au courant that name yes ron townsend uh, the the heavyset uh, bearded guy in the group mm-hmm. he and his mm-hmm. wife came up with the idea and when we heard it we liked it so much we said oh that is so perfect <laughs> everybody liked it mark our manager mm-hmm. johnny rivers everybody just said that that's it that's the name <laughs> We're speaking with Marilyn McCoo and Billy Davis Jr. of The Fifth Dimension. Their show, Up, Up, and Away, is coming to the Theater at Westbury on June 9th in Westbury, New York, and the Tropicana Casino and Resort in Atlantic City on June 11th. Now, the song we we just heard, of course, uh, one of your biggest hits, Aquarius and Let the Sun Shine In, that medley there from, well, the two songs from the uh, musical Hair, and uh, something of a uh, surprise, I suppose, for fans of the group, you know, to cut a record like that. Well, you know, when we when we heard it, when we went to the theater and heard the song, uh, we heard Aquarius and and believed that that could be a hit with the group. 
And so we called Bones Howe, our producer, and and um, said, Bones, we want to record this song. We really believe we can make it a hit. We didn't know that it had already been released on mm-hmm. a couple of other artists beforehand. And he said, well, I, I just don't know that it has, you know, it, it hasn't hit yet. He said, but let me sit down with it and think about it. And he came back with the idea of putting it together with Let the Sunshine In. Now, the group formed in uh, late 65, early 66, and uh, the two of you were married in 1969, so I can only assume that there was uh, a budding romance over the years in the group. Well, Well, yeah, I I guess you could say that. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if it was a budding romance, but it was a friendship. (laughs) Right. It was a friendship that started. Yeah, that turned into that budding romance. Yes, it did, yeah. Well, now, uh, man-to-man here, Mr. Davis, uh, she's gorgeous, so (laughs) I would assume that had to have been in the back of your mind right at the very beginning. Well, actually, you know, it was just the opposite. You know, not that that she wasn't uh, uh, good-looking and and smart and and all these things, but it, it, it was it wasn't love at first sight. It was more of a friendship, like like we were saying. We weren't each other's type. Yeah. No, 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 no. I was short and handsome, and oh, <laughs> <laughs> and she was tall, and mm, uh, but you know, <laughs> but but no, we wasn't each other's type, but we sure got to be each other's type. I mean, you know, it's, it's like the Lord said, okay, y'all, I got something for you all. <laughs> right, it was at, it was out of your hands. <laughs> yeah, it was totally out of my hands. Right. <laughs> Well, since this uh, budding romance, we'll call it, was happening uh, within the group, did Laura Nero write Wedding Bell Blues specifically with, with that in mind? Well, she wrote that song for a bill in her life. Oh. And she actually recorded it, and uh, it was released mm-hmm. in, in California. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was released. I shouldn't say in California. Yeah, we don't know it was where, released right. around, the wor- uh, around the country, but it, it uh, made some noise in California. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, and when the record didn't look like it was doing much, you know, uh, Bones Howe, our producer, uh, brought the song to me for an album cut, thinking it would be fun since Billy and I, by that time, were going together. Right. And it uh-huh. wouldn't it be a lark for me to record Marry Me Bill, you know, Wedding Bell Blues, Marry <laughs> Me Bill. And um, we had no idea it was going to end up being selected as a single. Mm-mm. Well, that sounds like something else that was out of your hands, too. <laughs> yes, there were a lot of things that happened <laughs> oh, that, that were out, out of our hands. Our, right. hands. <laughs> our whole career. <laughs> I'd like to ask you about uh, another song, a Stone Soul Picnic. Now, I think as a harmony group, this is one of your finest performances, and I'm a big fan of four- and five-part harmony. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So okay. We, are, we are too, you know. When it's done so well, so exquisitely well, I just I feel like I'm going to levitate off the floor. Well, you know, uh, uh, Stone Soul Picnic was, was our first million selling record, and uh, that was also a Laura Nero song. Yeah. Yeah, and when we first heard the song, we were at a listening session and uh, listened for some some music for the album. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we all liked and, it. And we everybody liked yeah. it. And we we agreed. And say, hey, this is. We think this is going to be a hit record yeah. for us. And 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 sure enough, we would kind of hit the jackpot on that one. We're talking to Billy Davis Jr. and Marilyn McCoo, formerly of the Fifth Dimension. Their show, Up, Up and Away, is coming to the uh, theater at Westbury in Westbury, New York, June 9th at 8 p.m. and June 11th at the Tropicana Casino and Resort in Atlantic City. Now, you did mention uh, wanting to be a, a duo, and, and you achieved that. And in fact, with You Don't Have to Be a Star to Be in My Show, you won, what was your, what, seventh Grammy? That was, the that's seventh, right. that was our seventh Grammy. Yes, it, that's right. Yes. And that was, that, was, <clears throat> that was quite exciting. What, what happened is that we were, we were recording for uh, uh, ABC Records. Mm-hmm. And uh, our A&R guy said, well, that's just this producer who who worked with Motown. His name is Don Davis out of Detroit. He said, I'd like to get him to work with you guys for this for this, for this this particular album. And uh, so so Don came out, and he was showing us all these songs, and, and uh, You Don't Have to Be a Star was one of them. 
and uh, he he kept saying, he said, I, I think this is going to be a hit for you guys, and we and we quite naturally we we got to where we stopped trying to pick hits. <laughs> you know, we, didn't, we wasn't successful, you know, and and we kept saying, "Well, yeah, yeah, okay." No, we you know. no, we liked it. <clears throat> we, no, we thought it was a cl- we, we, think we thought it was a clever song, <clears throat> but we we didn't know. You but know, artists think everything's gonna be a hit. You know, that's just the way we think. You know, we think everything we do is, is, is yeah, this is great. You know, but but we always wrong. <laughs> but but but, uh, but 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 we did like the song, but we thought the the. I hope because the loving time was was a strong song too, which was the first song uh, that was, that was released. But 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 Don Davis was right. It was you don't have to be a star. We won a Grammy for that one. Fantastic! I should mention to the audience that it was some years ago, a little over ten years ago, that you wrote a book together, which is also called Up Up, up and Away. away. <laughs> right? That's right. How we found love, faith, and lasting marriage in the entertainment world. Because by that time, you know. You know, Billy and I have been married for 46 years now. Mm -hmm. And so uh, at that time when we wrote the book, we had been married for 35 years, and people Mm -hmm. were wondering how how are they managing to keep their relationship together in this business. And so that was was one of the motivators to to write the book. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, it's it's a fascinating book. I have that book. It comes with a CD too, with a couple of songs on it. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, right. Now, if people want to catch up with you and and what you're doing now, aside from the shows, obviously coming up, and where would they go online to do that? Actually, they can go on our website. Yeah, McCooDavis dot com. Yeah, and of course, uh, on on uh, Facebook, uh, mm-hmm. you know, there we always try to keep the uh, keep our Facebook. Uh, uh, page current. updated yeah. and current with with activities that we're involved in. I want to thank you both so much for coming on and uh, spending some time with us. Well, thank you, Ghostly. Thanks, Ghostly. We are so excited about yeah. being back at Westbury because we haven't we haven't been there in a number of years, and uh, we're excited about the show that we're doing because we've been getting a lot of wonderful response, and it's going to be full of the hits yes, that people want yes. to hear, and plus some some other music that they're not expecting us to do, you know? Oh, really? Right, absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, also, Atlantic City is going to be so cool, because we haven't been there in a while, too. So we're really looking forward to this visit to the East Coast again. Well, we look forward to seeing you. Uh, once again, the Theater at Westbury, June 9th, and the Tropicana Casino and Resort in Atlantic City on June 11th. Again, thank you so much, and both of you, it's been a joy to speak with you, and have a great rest of your day. Well, well thanks, thanks so much. much. You take care.